learning Norwegian grammar is also learning a kind of formula on how to form words. En bok og bestemt form, en tal. Bestemt form, en tal, boken. Flertal og bestemt boker. Flertal, bestemt bokene. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Donita, your Pune teacher in Norway, and in this video, I will explain to you all of the things that you need to understand about nouns or substantive på norsk. So this video will be a multilingual language video, and I will explain the substantive or nouns in three different languages: norsk, English, and Tagalog. Because most of my viewers is from the Philippines, and some of the Filipinas who are living here in Norway want to learn Norwegian, especially the grammar. So I will try to explain to you in the easiest possible way that you will understand how you can bend those substantive or nouns and also what is the difference between proper noun and common noun in Nosh. First, I will explain to you what is substantive or nouns in English. So substantive are noun of mennesker, ting, dir, plus. So they are noun. Substantive. English nouns are names of person, things, and places. So that is noun. Substantive are urklaser. So in Norwegian, they have ten parts of speech. In Norwegian, they have ten urklaser: substantive, pronoun, prepositioner, verb, adverb, adjective, interjectioner, conjunctioner, subjunctioner, or determinative. In Norwegian, they have 10 parts of speech. It is not the same in English. In English, we have 8 parts of speech. Noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, interjection, preposition, and conjunction. So, now, let's focus first on substantive. So, sami sumiye har sagt. Substantive are noun of noven ting eller noven. Noun of en person eller ting. So again, the meaning of nouns is name of person, things, or place. Now, in Norwegian, they have three gender. På norsk, de har tre son of substantive. Hangson for masculine, hungson for feminine, interson for neutral. Now, don't ask me why they have. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me why because when I came here, they already have this kind of tradition and they use it to identify the nouns if that is a feminine or masculine or neutral. Now, I will give you an example of function. En gut, en man. So, vi bruker en. En is an article. So, en is an article that we use before the noun or the substantive and good and now function a jente jenta and last is intention neutral et host who said et host who said so that is the three different gender of nouns in norwegian so there are tradition of substantive ponosk Hangshon, hungshon, intention. Hangshon, en gut, en man. Hungshon, ayente, intention, et hus. Now, the nouns in Norwegian is divided into two. So, substantive po nos deles itu. Egen nam o feles nam. Egen nam bitir specifique or specific proper noun. For example, Oslo, Philippines, Norway, Donita, Lara. So, a specific name of a person, of a place, or a thing. A specific name. Now, when we say felesnam or general, no one will snack around felesnam, they are general. Common noun. So, egenam are specific, proper noun, while felesnam is general, common noun in English. The example of it is be, land, nam, larer, colleague. So that is common nouns. 
generalna. Ok. How can we know that we need to use the masculine noun or the feminine noun or the neutral noun in Norwegian? So now in sport, the minor can be broken hangshon, hangshon, intetshon, ponosk. And how we will know it? Or vordan vi skal vite det? Vordan vi skal vite at ode intetshon jeg må si et hus. Ode var hangshon jeg må si en mann. Ode var hangshon jeg må si en jente. So all you have to do is to remember it and memorize it. I admit to myself that it is hard to remember every names and the gender of everything or places in Norsk. So I admit to that it is difficult to remember what is Hangshon, Hongshon, Intention, or what I use for every single name or substantive. Now, my strategy is to remember all the Intention or Neutral because that is the fewest. So if you already remember the noun in Intention or Neutral, it will be easier for you to use Hangshon instead of for Hongshon. Hangshon is masculine because they more often use masculine gender rather than the feminine. Because it is important to remember that feminine or Hongshon is just optional to use. And uh, some of the regional dialects here in Norway, just like in Bergen, they don't use A, L or Hongshon. So that is very important to remember that you can choose between Hangshon and Hongshon. And when Filke or Bier here in Norge, same as in Bergen, you don't use A or Hongshon in substantive. So the other question is how we bend or vor eller vordan kan bli böjes kan bli böjes substantiver because substantiver kan böjes på obestämt indefinite and bestämt definite form. So when do we use obestämt form and bestämt form? For example, en bok Obestem en bok. Jeg leser en bok. That is the first time that I talk about a book. Så jeg leser en bok, og det er første gang jeg snakker om en bok. Så dere er ikke kjent med boken som jeg leser. Så først, jeg sa jeg leser en bok. Etterpå, jeg bruker boken, which is bestem form, definite form. Og det betyr at dere er allerede kjent med boken som jeg snakker om. Så du må huske at vi bruker obestemt når dere er ikke kjent med noe fra før. Så du må huske at vi bruker indefinite form når du er ikke familie eller du ikke vet noe om det som jeg snakker om. For eksempel den boken. Så vi bruker obestemt form når vi hører noe som er nytt. So we use indefinite form when we hear something that is new, that we don't know about it. Okay? Now, about bestemt. Vi bruker bestemt form når vi er kjent om en ting fra før. So we use bestemt or definite form when we already familiar with the things that we are talking about. Or the people that I am talking about knows what I am talking about. So I hope that you understand what I'm talking about. And don't worry because I will explain it in Tagalog in the last part of my video for my fellow Filipinos who are watching. But now I'm explaining it in Norsk and English. And then når vi forteller mer om en ting, vi må bruke beste form. And when we talk more about something, about a thing, about a book, we will use definite form. So now I will give you some example in norsk. So nå jeg skal gi deg eksempler på norsk. Så denne eksempler skal være på norsk på grunn av de lærer overstemt og bestemt form på norsk. Ok? Plutselig snublet de over en kiste. En kiste. Så vi bruker en og så kiste. Det er hansjon. Maskulin form. Da de åpnet kista, så når de åpner kista, så en kiste og bestem, kista bestem. Ok, neste eksempel. Kurt har en 
Champepin, it's adjective. Book and book. Folk scenes at boken till Kurt är den finaste i hela byen. Så en bok obestämd, boken bestämd. För intention, exempel ett äventyr obestämt, äventyret bestämt form. So I hope that you already understand the ubestemt and bestemt form. En bok, boken. Now, all those examples that I give to you is in singular form, tal form. Okay? Because I want you to focus first from the difference of ubestemt and bestemt form. So jag har gett exempel på tal form, singular. En bok. Okay. Now there is also plural form. Two or more. More. Two or more. Plural form. Eller på norsk flertal. So substantive, they can be po ental form or they can be po flertal. Or they have ubestem or bestem form. No. We are already po en book or booken. No, we skal snacker on flertal. For example, jag läser två böcker. Två böcker. So you need to add er in the end of the substantive or nouns to make it in a plural form. Böcker, blianter, äpplen, kakor. Så på norsk, du tränger och sätter in er på slutet av var substantive. Samma som substantiv. Ental, substantiver, flertal. Kake, ental, kaker, flertal. Bok, ental, böcker, flertal. So I hope you understand the form. So learning Norwegian grammar is also learning a kind of formula on how to form words. I hope you understand. I really hope so. But if you have any questions, just comment down below. So, I said that in flirtal, we use er, if it is in indefinite form. But we use any if that is bestem form. For example, the two books som jag har läst är om norsk grammatik. So, I already told you on the first place that I read two books. And... On the next part, because you are already familiar with the books that I'm talking about, I use yeah, bukene. Kesan? So, bukene som jag har läst är om norsk grammatik. So, I hope you understand the formula on how you bend or bias or how you change the form of substantive or nouns in Norwegian. I will show you the table and book, buken. Böcker, böckerna. Okej. Okay. En bok och bestämd form, en tal. Bestämd form, en tal, böcker. Flörtal, obestämd, böcker. Flörtal, bestämd, böcker. I want you to give an example and comment down below, please. Try to exercise. And I'm pretty sure that you will experience that you don't understand or you're not familiar with the word. You don't know how you will form it. Because sometimes, for example, at whose, when it become flirtal, we will just use whose. Because no one or klarerike oböjes. Or nor de blir bestem form flere husen. Yeah, so it will be different. And uh, I will recommend to you this website. I will just show you on the screen. When you don't know how to bend or change the form of every noun. And there po norsk, hvis du er ikke sikker eller du vet ikke hvordan du bøyes substantiver, her er en webside som du kan bruke for å gjøre det, som kan hjelpe deg. Now, I need to explain it in Tagalog. Obestemt og bestemt form. Kapag obestemt, gagamitin mo yan. For example, en bok. Sa isang bagay na hindi ka pamilyar o hindi mo pa alam before. Ngayon, kapag uh, alam mo na o nasabi, nasabi mo na ito dati, gagamit ka na ng best form. 
And ang best time form, ginagamit din natin yan kapag magkukwento pa tayo or magsasabi pa tayo ng mas maraming bagay about sa isang bagay yung sinasabi natin. For example, in book. So, kapag nakapagkwento na ako about sa book na ito, sasabihin ko na susunod is book yan. Kasi nakakwento na ako, familiar ka na, alam mo na yung sinasabi ko. Or pwede rin na gamitin natin ng ubes form kapag hindi mo alam yung sinasabi mo or hindi alam ng kausap mo yung sinasabi mo on the first place. For example, wala kang idea. So first, sasabihin mo, end book. Hindi, yay lesser end book. Tapos, kapag alam na ng kausap, oo, oh, oh, book pala yung nabasa mo, hindi magasin, hindi dyaryo. Ngayon, kapag alam na ng kausap mo yung sinasabi mo na yun nga, yun ang binasa mo, gagamitin mo na yung book yan afterwards. Because familiar ka na sa sinasabi mo and familiar na rin yung kausap mo sa sinasabi mo. So, that is the major difference between ubes temp and best temp form. Lagi mong tatandaan, ubes temp sa simula, kapag hindi alam na kausap mo yung sinasabi mo. And then, kapag magpapatuloy ka pa at magkakwento ka ba about more dun sa sinasabi mo, best temp form na siya. Definite form na siya. Sa first time na sasabihin mo ang isang bagay, ubes temp. Kapag magkakwento ka pa, papatuloy mo pa ito, best time. Ngayon, kapag magsasabi naman tayo ng isang bagay na alam natin, lahat ng tao alam yun, gagamit ka na ng best time form. Example, de var en gang tre bener som yik po yak i skugen. So, skugen is kagubatan. Lahat is alam yung kagubatan. Dahil alam naman natin ang kagubatan, common sense. Depende na lang kung pinanganak sa isla or sa walang gubat yung isang tao. Pero majority of the people know what is iskugen. Kaya gagamitin mo na is best temp form. Kaya yung iba nalilito. Kailan ba gagamitin yung ubes temp and best temp? Lagi mong tatandaan, first time you will talk about something, ubes temp. And then kapag magsasabi ka pa, you will talk more about that thing, best temp form. Now, when you are talking to a general thing that most of the people knows about, Use best time for in Noshk. Vis bis nakker om nove som vi regner med at alle känner till framför. Vi kan bruke best time for med en gang. For example, det var en gang tre vänner som gick på jakt i skogen. Så alle mennesker visste skogen. Så vi kan bruke best time for. Now, in English, if all the people know or familiar about a thing that you are talking about, you can use best stem form or definite form. That's all. I hope that you have learned something about this video. And please comment down below some of the substantive or nouns that you know and that you transform into other forms just like best stem, best stem form. Also in endal or flirtal, singular and plural. Thank you so much and please like this video and share this video to your friends who also want to learn and understand the difference between ubestem and bestem form and about substantive or nouns in Norwegian language. And don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel for you to be updated when I have new uploads. Bye!